The tight end position is in disarray right now. A lot of fantasy owners have found themselves reaching really early to grab those top tight ends to ensure they lock down that position for their team. Should you be reaching that early on draft day? Or do we have some hidden gems that you could wait on and get great value for? Hey, what's going on, Headliner Nation? Kyle Richardson back here with another episode on the Fantasy Headliners. Continuing our updated ranking shows, we've already done running backs and wide receivers, dropping tight ends right now, and we've got quarterbacks coming very soon. Again, all of these rankings, this will not be the last time we do these rankings. We still have a lot of time to go this offseason. We'll be putting out more rankings as we go along. Before we jump into the information, I've got a couple of things I just want to remind you of. Number one... The Fantasy Headliners Draft Guide is on pre-order right now, $19.99. One of the best values, one of the best bang-for-buck draft guides you will get this season for 2019. Make sure you pre-order that right now. We've been giving away some free ones, but don't be afraid to go out there and order yours because if we do any giveaways and you've already bought one, we'll reimburse you for it. So don't worry. We're doing some giveaways. Even if you buy one because you have to have it, we'll cover you. And also... We're going to be doing some other giveaways here really soon, some cool giveaways. We have a couple of signed jerseys. I'm not going to give them away just yet because I'm sure Jake doesn't want me to name them. But we're going to be giving away a couple of signed jerseys coming up really soon too. So make sure you're hitting that subscribe button, becoming a part of Headliner Nation today. And if you're not a part of Headliner Nation already and you do subscribe on this video, make sure you let me know in the comments below. So I can welcome you to Headliner Nation personally. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you share. And of course, make sure you comment. We're one of the most interactive channels here on YouTube. You have anything for us in the comments, let us know and we'll respond to you. Let's jump into the action. All right, before I show you the top 12, my first tier here of uh, tight ends, just one quick side note. You know, I already said it once. We're going to be doing these videos again We want a discussion, so if you see anything that you disagree with, anyone's too high, too low, give us some reasons in the comments below and let us know what you would change and what you do. The only thing we ask is that you just be respectful about it. Nobody can tell the future. We do our analysis and we put together the best information possible to help you come draft day. If you don't agree, that's great. That's what fantasy football is all about. We like to talk about this. We like to debate back and forth a little bit. However, just make sure you're being respectful. That's the only thing we ask in the comments. If you are, you'll definitely get a great conversation from us. So let's start jumping into the top 12 tight ends right now. Moving over, as you can see there on the graphic, Travis Kelsey coming in at number one. Travis Kelsey and George Kittle there at the top one and two. Now, I do want to say something about both of these guys. Both of them have question marks right now in terms of volume. George Kittle's volume question mark is really around, you know, all the weapons that are around him right now. You know, last year, Marquise Goodwin had some injuries that we knew about. He didn't have his quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo. So will the, you know, will the offense function a little bit differently? Dante Pettis broke out. You know, what is, you know, what is that offense truly going to look like in 2019? Is George Kittle going to be able to get the same volume that he did this past season? I think George Kittle has become, uh, you know, a true weapon in fantasy football. So I have no question marks that he's going to have another good season. And honestly, if he's got more weapons around him, that makes him, you know, a little bit better of a target for me because now offenses won't be able to focus on him nearly as much. So I don't see a whole lot of regression for him. Uh, Obviously a really great season. Does he regress a little bit? Maybe, but not enough to take him out of the number two spot for my tight ends. You already saw there Travis Kelsey also at number one. That's really going to hinge again on kind of Tyreek Hill and what happened with that situation where do we where do we go moving forward with that Travis Kelsey is still going to be in my opinion the number one target of uh, of Patrick Mahomes there in Kansas City Tyreek Hill the running game you know Sammy Watkins is there you know what what ends up happening with everybody you know Hardman is also a rookie there as well so Travis Kelsey again these two guys at the very top you know one and two these are my two like safe picks these are the guys that I know are going to produce 
for me 100%. And one thing that I want to mention too before uh, we get too uh, too deep into it, there, there's three players, and the next one is coming up at number four and then at seven. Three players is stat I want to throw out there for for you real quick. So according to Next Gen Stats, if you know if you're a fan of looking at some of those different statistics, Next Gen Stats is a really good one. The top three players in yards after catch per reception in 2018 were all tight ends. George Kittle was number one at 10.2 yards. Evan Ingram was number two at nine yards. And then Vance McDonald was number three at 7.9 yards. So those three tight ends, guys, I've got at one, or excuse me, at two, four, and seven were guys that did really well after the catch. And I love that with my receiver slash tight ends. Guys who can get that extra. Guys who, when they catch the ball, it's not done at that point. There's, I always have this saying, and I, you know, I constructed something for running backs called the dynamic running back rating. If you don't know what that is, I'm going in detail in it in the draft guides. It's exclusive to our draft guide. You're not going to find this anywhere else. Uh, but I talk about what players do after they get the ball. Opportunity and opportunity share and everything like that are great, but I want to know what guys do after they have the ball in their hands these three guys are good athletes after they get the ball in their hands and i love that that's why these three guys will be guys that i target all season long um moving on though before we talk too much about that you know zach Ertz going forward here so one thing i hear a lot about from zach Ertz is a lot of regression because he had a career high 156 targets last year he had a career high 116 receptions He had a career high 1,163 yards the first time he's had more than 1,000 yards in the season. And then he also had eight touchdowns, which tied a career high. His receptions per game, also a career high at 7.3 receptions per game. So all career highs in his age 28 season. Um, If you look at that offense this year, you know, you got Carson Wentz coming back, hopefully 100% healthy. You know, Zach Hurts, I, I hear a lot of complaints about him and the and the potential regression and things like that coming up. And I don't think he, he probably does nearly what he did last season in terms of targets and receptions and yards. But I still think he's going to be the number one target on that team, just like Travis Kelsey in Kansas City, just like George Kittle in San Francisco, and just like Zach Ertz uh, in the, you know, just like Zach Ertz will be in Philadelphia. And then also Evan Ingram in New York, I think, will be the top target. So if I'm really focusing on tight ends in my draft this year, these four guys are the guys that I look at and I say they will be the number one guy to look at for the quarterback in that offense. I don't mind the wide receivers in Philadelphia, but Zach Ertz is the superior pass catcher, playmaker in my mind. So that's why these guys are at one, two, three, and four. Evan Ingram, obviously coming in at number four, talked about him uh, there a moment ago. You know, it, Odell Beckham Jr. being gone, um, I think is going to, the, the biggest person to benefit from that is not going to be Sterling Shepard. It's not going to be Golden Tate. It's going to be uh, Evan Ingram. I really like him this season. He only played in 11 games last year, a little bit of an injury uh, that he dealt with last year. But he still averaged 12.8 yards per reception. He did have 577 yards. You know, Evan Ingram is going to be a guy that's going to be a little bit of a vertical uh, vertical threat. They can put him in the seam, run him down the middle of the field. He's going to be a guy that they look at to be the one that stretches the field, to help that helps open up opportunities for a Golden Tate, a Sterling Shepard, a Saquon Barkley. So I think it, basically what we saw um, back in 2017 when he had 722 yards, six receptions, 115 targets, I think we get back to that pure volume standpoint because I think Eli Manning or Daniel Jones either one I know we're saying Saquon Barkley is going to be the top I think I think Evan Ingram will be the guy that they look at first on passing plays that aren't specifically designed for the running back will they check down to Barkley a lot yes but Evan Ingram on on plays that are not specifically designed for the running back to catch the ball out of the backfield Evan Ingram will probably be the first target they look at quite often again that's why I have him at number four this year Moving forward, going a little bit quicker at this point, O.J. Howard for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers coming in at number five. A lot of people, again, aren't 100% sold 
on that Tampa Bay offense, mostly because they don't like Jameis Winston. But I'm here to tell you Bruce Arians is going to uh, utilize the weapons in this offense to the best of their abilities. Since coming into the league, O.J. Howard has averaged 16.6 receptions per game. He has been a stud since coming into the league in terms of, or excuse me, receptions per game. Yards per reception. Holy cow. That would be insane. Yards per reception. Excuse me there. 16.6 yards per reception. Uh, you know, he's been he's been very, very good since coming into the league. And I think he's going to be a guy that is utilized. And the Chris Godwin hype, I feel, is a little bit out of control right now because I think O.J. Howard has an opportunity to be kind of the second target on that team and then go with Chris Godwin. Uh, not hitting on Chris Godwin at all. I just like O.J. Howard this year as well. Coming on at number five, I think he has an opportunity to do some really good things this year. Hunter Henry at number six. You know we love Hunter Henry on this show. Uh, one of our openings had Hunter Henry giving us a shout out here. If you haven't seen it, you'll have to go back to one of our other episodes. Maybe we'll throw that in here again really soon. Uh, but his rookie season came in in 2016, eight receiving touchdowns. 2017, not nearly as good, 579 yards. But he had to deal with Antonio Gates during that time. And then obviously, right before 2018, he tears that ACL. However, he almost came back last year. He was almost going to play last year. Um, he went through some workouts. It just didn't. Uh, he just didn't end up doing a whole lot at the end of the season. There was a lot of talk that he's going to come out. He's going to play. Um, he's going to do all these different things. Um, he's going to get ready to go at the end of the season. Just didn't end up happening. However, he's ready to go now. This is the reason that I don't like Mike Williams this year as much as everyone else because Hunter Henry, I think, is going to be a huge asset to that team. Uh, moving on now, Vance McDonald at number seven. Already talked about him a little bit, but last season, age 28 season, had a really good year. 72 targets, 610 yards, um, four touchdowns. Last year, he checked in as the tight end 10. So I have only three spots higher than what he finished as last year. But keep in mind, too, there are 226 vacated targets on the Pittsburgh uh, Pittsburgh Pirates. I'm in baseball mode right now, too. Pitts. Berg Steelers. Uh, that's 33.4% of their targets from last season. So Vance McDonald uh, is going to see a lot more of those targets. I know we love James Washington. They've signed Don, Don, uh, Dante Moncrief. Uh, James, you know, excuse me. Juju Smith Schuster is going to be the main guy there, but I, I expect a really good year from Vance McDonald. I'm looking forward to it. Eric Ebron coming in at number eight. The biggest thing there is I see a lot of regression coming. Last year, uh, 13 touchdowns, uh, more than he scored in basically his entire career up to that point. 13 touchdowns last season, but you've got Devin Funches now, Jack Doyle, uh, Jack Mother and Doyle, as we call him on this show, uh, will be back as well. So he, there's going to be some extreme regression with Eric Ebron. I'm not trusting him this year. I think a lot of times you're going to see him drafted as the tight end four, tight end five. I'm not doing it. I got to stay away from Eric Ebron there this year. A lot of serious regression coming. David Njoku coming in at number nine. He's one that you know I am a little bit worried about. He hasn't really come to fruition yet. 639 receiving yards last year, four touchdowns. He had a decent season, finishes the tight end nine. So same spot this year is where I have him. But obviously you have Odell Beckham Jr. there now. Does Kareem Hunt at the end of the season take some opportunity away? I want to see another big step forward from David Njoku this year, but they have so many weapons, and I don't see David Njoku as the superior pass catcher on that team. It's Odell Beckham Jr. And then, honestly, I would go with Jarvis Landry over uh, David Njoku at that point. Some people might not agree about that, but I do like Jarvis Landry still. Austin Hooper surprised a lot of people last year. I'm going to put him at tight end 10. He finished at tight end 6, 127 points in half PPR leagues. Austin Hooper having that breakout season last year, though. Um, uh, played in 16 games, 71 receptions, 660 yards, 4 touchdowns. He only averaged 9.3 yards per reception. So not really. And the two seasons before that, he had 14.3 and 10.7. So I would like to see maybe a little bit, a little bit more big playability from him. But you've got, again, a lot of weapons on that team that are going to end up coming before him. Austin Hooper, we'll see what happens, especially with Devontae Freeman being back. 
what does that do uh, to Austin Hooper's uh, value moving forward? Jared Cook coming in at number 11, and it's been since 2015 that the Saints had a legitimate tight end threat. They did have Kobe Fleener a couple of years ago that had decent season, but it was Ben Watson uh, back in 2015, 110 targets, 74 receptions, 825 yards, six touchdowns. Obviously, they had Jimmy Graham back in the day, but are they going to utilize Jared Cook? Jared Cook coming off a very good season. Are they going to utilize Jared Cook in the same way that they did with Ben Watson or that they did with Jimmy Graham? Is he going to be able to help in the same way? Obviously, you have Alvin Kamara there eating up a ton of targets as well. What if Traquan Smith takes the next step? What if Cam Meredith is healthy? You know, all of these things that are going on around Jared Cook. These last, you know, three guys, or these three guys right here at 9, 10, and 11, I talked about it with all of them. There's just a lot of opportunities around them for other players. What kind of a piece of the pie will they end up getting? Delaney Walker coming back in at number 12, finishing up the top 10 tight ends right here before we move forward with the rest for uh since 2014 obviously before his injury last year um he had 2014 15 16 17 so four straight years of at least 800 receiving yards so he was doing big things in tennessee when he was healthy during that time he had 106 133 102 and 111 targets so at least 100 targets each season as well if he's healthy 100 percent ready to go um, obviously janu smith also had a serious injury to to finish the year there so neither of them were healthy to begin the year delaney walker maybe a little bit ahead in his time frame than smith at this point if walker's back on the field and healthy expect him to be another huge target for marcus mariota and that will wrap up the top 12 tight ends so now we need to jump into 13 through 24 All right, moving forward now, 13 through 24, the next set of tight ends here, the tight end twos, as as I like to call them. Who do we have leading it off here? Well, maybe this one will surprise you a little bit, but he's our cover boy there on that picture as well. Mark Andrews from the Baltimore Ravens coming in as my tight end 13 this year. I really like the connection that him and Lamar Jackson had at the end of last season. A very underrated season, honestly, for me in his rookie year. 552 yards, average 16.2 yards per reception. I know that they have like 478 tight ends on the roster there. And they are going to use probably all of, as many of them on any uh, any formation is possible. So they're going to use a lot of those. Now, Hayden Hurst and Mark Andrews are going to be the, the two main guys. Hayden Hurst is, is a sure-handed tight end. He's, guys are gonna get, he's a guy that's going to catch a lot of balls. However, he dealt with a lot of injuries last year, and he just didn't get a chance to get up to the speed with the system that Mark Andrews did. Mark Andrews is is going to be a is a big play tight end. He's a guy that's going to be a little bit of a vertical threat at times. Sixteen point two yards per reception uh, reception last year. So this is a guy that's going to have some big plays under his belt. His long reception last year seventy four. So a lot like George Kittle, uh, who made a lot of guys miss and had some really big plays, Mark Andrews could end up doing something similar, not like a tight end one, two, three season, but he could do something similar just because they are going to be running tight end, two tight end sets a lot. And uh, so there's going to be someone else on the field to take away from him, but also they're going to run the ball so much. So that's why I don't have him quite as a tight end one, but I, I like I like kind of his floor, especially with Lamar Jackson. Those two gelled really good at the end of last year. 14 and 15 are our rookies uh tj hawkinson and noah fant both of those guys checking in at 14 and 15 i always caution fantasy owners on uh, rookie tight ends i mean you have your exceptions i mean obviously the biggest one is kind of evan ingram a couple of years ago where he came into the league and just dominated right away um but with tj hawkinson and noah fant i'm gonna I'm going to take a step back, okay? So TJ Hawkinson, Detroit just, I know they've got a new regime there and they have a new offensive coordinator now, um, but people are like, oh, they want him to be the Rob Gronkowski of that the, the or they, they want him to be what Rob Gronkowski was for the Patriots. Well, I, I'm going to tell you now, people, there's no such thing as another Rob Gronkowski. TJ Hawkinson isn't that. 
is, is he super talented? Yes. He was the best tight end in the, in the draft this year. And he was the guy that was my tight end one. I talked him up before the draft. Really loved his ability. I loved him over Noah Fant. Um, the only problem is, is that, you know, he's with a Lions team where Matthew Stafford just hasn't targeted uh, tight ends before. You know, when was the last time the Lions had a tight end that was, it was a pure receiving threat that did great things in the passing game? You know, they wanted Eric Ebron to be that guy. One of my arguments against TJ Hawkinson is is if they really wanted to implement that in the offense, why did they let Eric Ebron walk? Eric Ebron is a receiving threat. If that's what they wanted at tight end, why didn't they keep him last year? So I just don't see a big season for him. I think he has a good season, but not a great season. He's not a guy that I want as my tight end one. Uh, In dynasty leagues, obviously, I'm stashing him. But in redraft, unless it's a two tight end league, uh, unless it's a late pick with some deeper rosters, I'm not going to make TJ Hawkinson my tight end one this year. Same with Noah Fant. I I like him. I think think with Joe Flacco there in Denver, it helps him a lot, and it gives him a little bit more value. Um, But, you know, again, Phillip Lindsey was big in the passing game last year. Deshaun Hamilton, a lot of people want to take another step forward. You have Cortland Sutton as well. So we'll see what happens. Fant and Hawkinson I have right next to each other. If I was, if you wanted me to be a betting man and put my money on one of them to be a guy that takes a step forward and be and is a tight end one this year, I would go with Fant before Hawkinson. Jack Doyle coming in at 16. You know what we say here, Jack Mother and Doyle. Really like him. He was not healthy last year. They're going to run him and Eric Ebron a lot. However, when Jack Doyle was healthy, Eric Ebron's snap percentage plummeted. It wasn't even close to what it was when Jack Doyle was hurt. So Jack Doyle is going to play when he is healthy. He is a trusted ally there of Andrew Luck. He's going to be a guy that's going to be on the field. Chris Herndon, a guy that I really liked prior to the season. However, a lot of offensive moves there, specifically with Le'Veon Bell. You've got Jamison Crowder there now as well. Um, you know, I, I just don't see him having nearly as much fantasy value. However, he could be a tight end too. Uh, Greg Olson coming in at 18. I like Greg Olson, but are they going to rely on Ian Thomas a little bit more this year? Greg Olson wants to give it one more shot. He wants to come back and have a good year to finish it. I just don't see him being a tight end one like he was in the past. I like him, and I'm rooting for him. I just don't know if he has it. Kyle Rudolph, one of my biggest busts last year. He was the guy that I absolutely loved coming into the season and was really a top five tight end for me before the season started. Ended up finishing at tight end eight, but it was really like a huge game, with a huge two-touchdown game at the end of the season that really propelled that performance. I'm rooting for the guy. I like him, but you have to remember they have Irv Smith uh, Smith there as well now. I think they're going to be running some two tight end sets. I think you're going to see both guys on the field a lot. I don't think... Kyle Rudolph is going to be nearly fantasy viable as he has been in the past. Mike Jacecki coming in at number 20 is a guy that I like to take a step forward. An awful, awful rookie season. However, it's the Miami Dolphins. Nobody had a great season last year. Mike Jacecki looking for him to take another step forward this year. Just not that big step forward as we would hope. He still has things that he needs to work on. Pass blocking. He needs to be able to do those things. He just he wasn't a great football player last year. He didn't show nearly the upside that we saw coming out of college. We'll see what happens moving forward. 21, Dallas Goddard. Talked about him a lot in the fantasy community because a lot of people think that he can be a legit high upside tight end too. However, we haven't seen two teammates really put together that type of a season since Aaron Hernandez and Rob Gronkowski did it for the Patriots, and that's just not going to happen again anytime soon. So Dallas Goddard, while I like him, I think it has to be a situation where Zach Ertz gets hurt for him to have really good fantasy value Um, now if you want to stash another tight end and you want to take you know Goddard with with Ertz and then if Ertz gets hurt you can play Goddard right away Um, if then just stream a tight end on Ertz's bye week you can do that Um, with Goddard though you know I think he's one of the reasons maybe Ertz takes a little bit of a regression this year as I talked about already just because there is an opportunity for Goddard to be on the field a lot more often in two tight end sets Darren Waller jumping in. He's he is a sleeper for me this year. So keep an eye on Darren Waller out there in Oakland. We've talked about how many vacated targets they have. He's the guy you want to keep an eye on. We've talked about him in some videos. You're going to hear about him in our draft guide quite a bit as well. Trey Burton, he was supposed to be the Travis Kelsey, remember? He was supposed to be the Travis Kelsey of the Chicago Bears last year. It didn't happen. I don't expect it to happen again this year 
either. And then Dawson Knox, a, 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 again, another sleeper, a guy that you're going to hear about in our draft guide more often. Uh, Dawson Knox is a sleeper for this year as well. I think he slides just inside the top 24. Kind of flew through those last uh, 13 through 24 a little bit just because I didn't want the video to take much longer. So we're going to wrap it up here again. If you have anything, comments, questions, uh, any disagreements, any agreements, let us know down below. We just ask that if you're disagreeing, be respectful about it. If you're respectful, then we'll definitely be responding and having a conversation with you. Thanks for checking out this video. Do not forget to pre-order that traf, uh, draft guide if you have not done so yet. The link is down below. Head over to the website and you can do that right away. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit that share button. And more importantly, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Become a part of Headliner Nation today. Thanks so much to everyone for watching this video. And we'll catch you on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners. Have a good one, everyone.